warm welcome to you and thank you for joining me on a thrilling experience on where is vivian i am vivian sang and welcome to the channel i'm pretty excited as you are aware from my previous video uploads i'm in malindi visiting various tourist attraction sites uh today we're in a very special place we're going to learn more about the history and culture of the swahili people as you're in this place you'll be able to visit three places within the within the same area the first place that we'll be visiting is the Gedi Rins. then you're going to be visiting a snake park and later on you're going to be visiting a butterfly place all these uh, places that I've mentioned are in one place super super excited guys come with me and let's explore uh, this uh, tourist attraction site <music> the ruins my name is Dana I'll take you around the old coastal uh, historical site which is Gedi ruins yeah you're welcome I'll be your tour guide through around here you know Arabs from Oman are the early visitors who came to the Kenyan coast mm. so by 12th century this town was established they lived here for 500 years that is from 12th century to 17th century then the town collapsed mm. so i'll tell you the reasons why these people lived here why they left the town after the 500 years we have some reasons or theories that made the town to to collapse so we shall walk around then i'll tell you the reason Nothing to see outside the town today. You know why? Mm. It's like the slums. Mm. So we are 800 years ago now. Mm. So everything, because they built mud houses, mud houses can't stay for 800 years. Mm. So everything from this side collapsed. You can see there's some houses in between the walls. So these mm. people were middle class people. They were not rich, they were not poor. Mm. So they had buildings, strong buildings, but not many like the, the mm. inner wall. So there's a lot to see. We shall cover this part. We shall cover Mdraigo for today. There were no no churches here. There was no Hindu temples, only mosques. Mm. Yeah, for for the for the for five acres, eight of them. You will see some of them today here. You know, Arabs right from right going left. So the date was found from the from the writings. Mm. Yeah. That is, uh, there is two calendars, 802 AH and 1399 AD. The AH is for Muslims and the AD is for Christians. That is oh. Al Hijra and Anno Domini. Oh. You can see that is according to Muslims' calendar, and the AD is for Christians' calendar. Oh. So what you say now is we're in 2012, right? Yeah. So this was 1399, right? Yeah, that almost calendar. 14th century. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so you can see 14th century, but it is the same. You have had like a Muslim are saying happy Muslim, yeah. yeah. So it is uh, this that calendar now, Al Hijra, oh. and the, the AD is for the we, we, we for the Christians. So it's oh. more than 600 years, huh? yeah. Oh. yeah. 14th century, we're in 21st century. Okay. Hey. Oh. Another thing, you can see these two tombs were for great people, that's why their tombs were, were covered. Mm. And another thing, in those days. Arabs used to bury their fellows with valuables. Oh. They believed after life you will go with what you had, like in Egypt. Oh. Recently there was an excavation, they found some tombs had valuables. Oh. Yeah, but it is the direction of Mecca. Mm. You know, if you want to pray, you have to face Mecca. Oh, this yeah, you can hear me from this part. No, no, no. So the echo was like a microphone, even if you are sleeping at the back, you wake up. You can hear someone is shouting there, mm. but that is a mosque which they have oh, a, a microphone. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm here at Gatorings and I'm really having a fantastic time just learning about the history of this particular place. Gedi Ruins uh, shows a representation of the Swahili town, how the Swahili people used to live, how they used to 
built their houses i've managed to go around the gate rings and uh, we've been able to see the palace the sighting of the, the their various rooms the various houses even uh, the wells where they would uh, you know fetch their water from such an interesting place and i've been able to see a true a true reflection of how old the this place is the ruins is for example as you can see behind me this is a tree that even takes about 300 years to to grow and you see it has gone over it has gone over the wall it shows a, a true evidence that that indeed Gedi ruins is um is an old place uh Gedi ruins date back from the 12th century and uh, in the 14th and the 15th century the the, the, the town was uh, rebuilt we have James Kirkman who excavated this particular place. Uh, Gedi Ruin started from the 1948 and then it was rebuilt in the 1958. Such an awesome place to come and just learn about the history of the Swahili people and just find out their way of life. We've seen some remains of uh, mosques here and uh, we've been taken around by a tour guide who has given us a wealth of information concerning Gedi Ruin. Interestingly, we've been able to learn that this particular place, the Gedi Rins, uh, international trade used to take place. There is evidence of uh, Chinese coins uh, in one of the rooms uh, that were the Chinese coins that were discovered. We also have a pair of scissors from uh, Spain, uh, beads uh, from Venice, as well as uh, iron lamps from India. Very interesting. Locals and the locals who are the coastal Bantus. You can see for the 500 years they were exchanging. You know most of the coastal bantus they used to hunt. They came here with the ivory skin and herds to, to, ex, to exchange with the Arabs. So for the 500 years they stayed here trading. Okay. Yeah. Another thing, they were Muslims because the evidence is we have eight excavated mosques. There's no church here. There's no Hindu temple and evidence that the people who lived here were, were Muslims. You know Portuguese came, they were Christian. But they didn't stay here, they just came to trade, then they, they left. But the, those who resided here were all, all Muslims because of the evidence of the eight mosques. Yeah. Another thing, you know, uh, the town also was divided. There was inner wall and the outer wall. So most of the strong buildings are found inside the inner wall and evidence that all the rich people resided inside the inner wall. Then in between the walls resided middle class people and the majority were poor was scattered outside the town. It's like today, you stay in Nairobi, there's Runda, there's Mudaiga, there's Karen, and also there's Bruma, Jengo, Kibera. So Kibera is Lam, so it is the same to this town now. They lived here peaceful, but later, by 17th century, they were attacked by other communities like the Oromo. Oromo came from Ethiopia to this side. Oromo Akushite community which attacked Gedi, and they killed many people and took the town. So it is the war is one of the theories that made the town to, to collapse. Another thing, there were lack of water because there is 28 water wells in the whole town but you can see for now there is no water so it is an evidence that where there is no water there is no life they had to go away from the, from the town so the ocean was near the place but naturally ocean recedes so if it creates land also the water table in the wells went down and finally the water dried up completely no water, no life so they had to go away from the town another reason why the town collapsed there were diseases like uh, the Portuguese brought maize in their ships there were a lot of rats the rats were spreading the black plague disease many people died and we are talking about 12th to 17th century there were no proper medication so many people died and some left the town that's the reason why the, the town collapsed now we are done with the gatherings uh, it, uh, we paid a hundred shillings for the snake park where we are going now we, we, we paid a hundred shillings and the butterfly is also a hundred shillings so in total we've spent we're going to spend 300 shillings so right now i'm heading out to the snake park to check out the place. so we are done with the ruins now it's about the reptiles yes so welcome to gedi reptile rescue you can see this project was started recently you know the purpose of the project was to rescue reptiles in the community like the cases of snake bites were off every day so for now, it has really helped the community because anyone who sees a snake in his house or compound, yeah. you just call the number of this place, there's many snake handlers will come and pick the snake to the cages. But you know also the snakes don't belong to the cages. Yeah. With time, they're taken back to nature. We have a Rabuko Sokoke forest. Oh. Yeah. So they're taken back 
to there. Mm. It's like for us, we don't belong to jail. Mm. You're all of our life. So it's like if you put them in cages like this, it's not good for them. Because they, there's no enough movement for them there to mm. look for the, for mm. the food. So it's not such a big, big snake park, but it's a rescue park. We rescue, and for now, the cases of snake bites in the community, they are very, very low. It has really helped the community. And you know, snakes are in three categories. We have the highly venomous snake, mm. we have semi-venomous snake, and none. Mm. So if you you can see like a, a black mamba, mm. black mamba is the highest venomous snake in Africa we have. Mm. You can see if you are bitten by a black mamba, mm. then there's no time even to write your will. Mm. Yeah, because you'll die like that. But we have also semi-venomous snake like the sand snake. We have uh, non-venomous like the python and the egg eating snake. You know, python is a, a non-venomous snake. It's a constrict, but mm. it doesn't. Uh, it has no venom. Mm. So they are, they are deadly in mm. constricting, but they they, they don't they, they are not deadly in in poison. Okay. So we shall see some of the snakes here. And if you are bitten by a snake, maybe it is during the night, and it, you, maybe you didn't see the snake. You have to know there. The, the, you see the place. Maybe if there is two spores, get to know that the the snake is highly venomous because all the highly venomous snakes possess two fangs to inject the venom ah. you can see but if you see more than two get noise semi or non venomous the, the the bite was just for for, for defense purposes you can see but you can see some of the snakes which are semi venomous here the non venomous and the highly venomous we have many cobras here like 20 cobras mm. yeah okay. highly venomous snakes yeah you know cobras also feed on other snakes yeah, yeah. so you are safe you they are in cages you are very safe so don't worry Thank you. You're welcome. You first. Yeah. So maybe you can differentiate a green mamba and the grass snake. Because if you are bitten by a snake which is highly venomous or it is non venomous, then you go for the anti venom. The anti venom is from the venom. You can see. So you have to know the snake. Because mm -hmm. uh, you say it was highly venom, it was a green mamba and it was this snake. And then you die from the ant venom. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. So you have to know the snake which has bitten you. Mm. Like this one has no venom, it's non venomous. You can use this one as a pet in your house. But you can see uh, to differentiate with, uh, with the green mamba, you, you can see your green mamba is uniformly green. Mm. But this one has spores, so that is the difference. Yeah. So you have to mm. know the difference. So, what does a green snake eat? Yeah, lizards. Ah, and, okay. Yeah, and frogs like that. Okay. You can see, like, there's a, a linked mark here. These are non venomous snakes. You can see, they look like the twigs. Yeah. Ah. You can see, maybe there's no snake, but there's a snake here, yeah. which is called linked mark. Oh. Yeah. And there's a, a house snake here. It bites. The house snake bites, but it is non venomous. Yeah, mostly they are so called house snake because mostly they, they are found in houses. My good house is like this one. Okay. Ah. Yeah, yeah. And we have the rufous, rufous snake here. You can see these snakes are non-venomous also. Uh -huh. you, you, if you want to hold one, I can take uh, one not, for you. No, no, no. <laughs> no, you're okay. The rufous snake are non-venomous also. Uh -huh. I can take one for you. <laughs> <laughs> The rufous big snake you can see the it is like big you can see yeah it's a ah. nice snake you can pet this one ah. hey. <laughs> <laughs> the word sun snake comes mm. because they are they hunt on the ground that's why they're called uh, red spotted beet sand snake because they hunt on the on the ground. They are non venomous also. Yeah. And there's a strip bellied sand snake also here because of the belly has some strips. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And a hissing. It gives a hissing sound. That's why it is called hissing sand snake. And another one here. Oh. But we have the dangerous one here. It's a pafada. Oh yeah. That one. Yeah. Pafada is highly highly venomous snake. Yeah, but see, it mm. gives a, a puffing sound as a, a mm. signal. You can you can get the sound. Just just okay. keep quiet. You'll get this. Okay, yeah. So it's a warning that get away, bite you. You get away from me. 
the, the part to road off so you have to cut if it is on this side you have to take off oh. so in the village you'll see some of many of the people they don't have hands or legs because of puffers but it has zero number of death but most of people are the less part of their bodies oh yeah. and we have a python here that's it oh very tasty Whoa. this is dangerous you can see but it, it's a constrict it goes around you Oh. That one can kill you. Yeah. Oh, python, the African rock python. There's an, a small one. Oh, it's a young yeah. python. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a young one. Yeah. It's one. No? One. Yes, there are two. There are two. Yeah. You can see the, the pythons. Yeah. If you feed them with a, a rabbit, a big yeah. rabbit, uh -huh. they can take like a month to eat another rabbit. Oh, okay. So they are, they are easy to keep. See, if it is spits in your eyes, you have to wash with cold water hmm. or milk. Then you stay in the dark for eight hours, you'll be healed. But if you, you rub your eyes, you can get blind. Yeah. So there are so many. We have a, a forest cobra here also. In the world, only the forest cobra doesn't spit. But the, the, the red, the brown, the all spit. So what does the forest cobra do? Bites. Okay. Yeah, it has. Uh, it is dangerous by biting. Oh, so the leopard tortoise is among the small five in Africa. Uh. Yeah, the other small five we have the rhinoceros beetle. It's a beetle, but it has a, a horn like a rhino and we have the elephant shrew. It's, if you go down the, the forest here you'll see the elephant shrew. It has it's like a big rat but it has a, a trunk like a an elephant. So that's why it is among the small five. And we have the buffalo weaver, we have the ant lion. Ant lion you can get them on the on the ground. They just put a, a hole to, to catch other other insects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rhinoceros beetle, the, the, the leopard the small five. So uh, the small five we have like one is the leopard tortoise, we have the rhinoceros beetle, elephant shrew, buffalo weaver and ant lion. Those are the, the small five and the big five. Thank you. Some of the artifacts which were excavated and some were brought from outside just to portray the Swahili culture how they are they are living today. But you can see like the pots for storage of water, the porcelains, the Chinese cash, the iron lamp, the pair of scissors which were excavated down in the ruins mm -hmm. were kept here. So you can walk around, everything is labeled, oh. you, you read by yourselves. Thank you. Yeah.
Hey guys, I am really having a fantastic time here at Gedderin's. Oh my god, there's so much to see. I've gone for a tour at uh, Gedderin's and then uh, the second part I went to was the snake park. And now I'm at the Kipepeo project, a butterfly house. I'm super excited to come check out the butterflies and learn more about them, their benefits and just see how beautiful they are. So guys, come along with me and let's explore the butterflies. about 420 square kilometer and through our research we found there are 600 indigenous trees which 200 for medicine also there's over 200 200,000 community who are living around this forest so this community because of poverty lack of education knowledge they used to destroy the forest through burning charcoal uttering animal and so on that's why we come up with some activity which we can part the community also to conserve the forest. Okay. One is to keep beehives around the Arabosque forest. Mm -hmm. So the community when they harvest honey, they used to bring here. Then we pack this honey in the jars of 500 men. We supply this honey to hotels, supermarkets and also to our tourists. Mm -hmm. secondly, we, secondly, our forest we have 263 species of butterfly. So we managed to train the community how to rear the butterfly to their home stage. Every butterfly has a food has a food plants. So when they're mating, the female they use to lay eggs on the food plants and they can make lay from 100 eggs to 200 eggs on the food plants. Then after three to five days we'll hatch the caterpillar. Caterpillar will consume the leaves for 14 days. Then we'll change to pupa, pupa the dormant stage, which can take one week before to hatch. So before to hatch our community also they used to bring those pupa here every Friday. We collect them, we record them, then we sort them and we do packaging here. We have red market to this pupa. We sell our pupa to UK, Turkey, Saudi Arabia and other countries. CS Pharma, they're supposed to get 6,000 shillings a week. Out of that, we take 20% as a saving. Then we give them 10% the month of December so they can prepare themselves for Christmas and the New Year. The remaining 10% we give them on January so they can pay school fees to their children. So we try to avoid the community to back the forest. Butterfly is a natural decoration. You can use a butterfly for wedding like a, let's say your wedding John, uh, John and Mary. Yes, I do marry, yes, I do John, and you release the butterfly. Butterfly also is a sign of peace. Mm -hmm. Butterfly, when they're dead, you can dry them with the sun or you can preserve them with a the formalin and you can make picture frame with the butterfly. Lifespan, they're living from 70 days to 100 days. There's a difference between butterfly and the moth. Moth were active during the night, butterfly were active during the day. There's a moth which the lovers we can eat. There's a people who eat the love of moth. Mm -hmm. And also there's a moth, those who can make a silk material, like all silk material. It's called Muna moth or Argema, scientific name. In our forest also we have two, over 200 elephants and 270 species of birds and a small animal like mungus, dig dig, and elephant shrew. Hey 
Hey guys, I am done with my tour here at Gatorings. Oh my god, I've really had a fantastic time. You know, from Gatorings to the snake park, and now I'm done with my tour to the butterfly house. So guys, if you're looking for tourist attraction places here in Malindi, this is a great option for you. If you've enjoyed this video as much as I have, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, join the Ways VVN team. Comment down below of your experience uh, to this place if you've been here before. Also tell me what you've enjoyed about uh, this video and if you're planning to come to Gedderin, if it's part of your bucket list. So guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.